If you follow the one, two, three, four combo, I guarantee you, your spider mite numbers will come down. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear, I'm JB. In this video, I'm gonna go over how to kill spider mites, which products will work, and which ones don't, so you don't waste your hard-earned dinero. As well as some procedures that you can implement now to reduce their numbers and possibly keep them from coming back. Before we get rolling, if you're feeling the vibe and you wanna be part of the tribe, subscribe. Time to squash some spider mites. Stick around. Spider mites are probably one of the tiniest big problems you can have around your home. They're almost microscopic and very hard to see. For us, it started about two years ago. We had some mulch delivered and we spread it all around our garden beds in the front yard and in the back. A few days later, we were sitting by the pool and we noticed that they were all over us. Those little plant feasters were everywhere. Spider mites were all over our patio, our furniture, and even in the garage. Now we had an exterminator come by and they sprayed all around the house and in the garage and on the patio and guess what? what they still came back an hour later I called him back a couple days later and then he gave me a bag of granular pesticide I immediately put it down watered it in hard and they still came back they were getting in my domain during this time we had four blue spruce junipers all along this fence line here and the spider mites completely wiped them out they turned completely brown within one season then we put in these nice sky pencils the following season and I do got to trim them up a little bit we were starting to see them inside the house too but not to worry if you don't have a lot of plants inside the house they will die off within a day or two. This video is mainly going to concentrate on treating them outdoors. I started doing some research on spider mites and I found that these guys can multiply so fast. Under the right conditions, spider mites can hatch in about three days. Become sexually active in five. Heyo! <laughs> and can lay about 20 eggs per day, living up to two to four weeks. In the fraction of a second, you can have an infestation on your hands. Now, they may have originated in the garden beds, but they were actually now coming from the lawn. That's right, the one thing that I worked so hard on to maintain season after season became a breeding ground for those little bundles of joy. I was finding them out by my curb, my sidewalk, and even at the end of my driveway. I found out that spider mites actually love nitrogen-rich lawns. Great. Let me tell you, the garage gal was not happy when she found that out. If you are interested in a low nitrogen fertilizer that really delivers some good results, I did a video not too long ago on earthworm castings. That fertilizer not only gives the lawn exactly what it needs, but it also fights off spider mites, which was a big reason why I got it in the first place. It's 100% organic and spider mites hate it. I'll have that fertilizer linked down below as well as the video so you can check it out. So all you lawn people out there, this is how you handle them. First step, leaf blow any infested areas. You could rinse down these areas with water too, but I found that to take a bit longer. Your goal is to push them back into the lawn. Next, you must dial in your mowing schedule. Mow every three to four days. And every time you mow, bag your clippings. Use your lawnmower like a vacuum and suck all those little guys up. You might have to slow your mowing speed down a little bit. I found this to be one of the best ways to slow them down. This is an absolute must. You could put your mower on mulch mode, but I strongly recommend if you have the bag mode, use it. Do not use the side discharge because that will simply put them back into the lawn. Put your clippings into a garbage bag and get rid of them. Next, lower your mower height by one half inch to one inch in areas where you see spider mites the most. This may be tougher on the lawn, but it does reduce their food source and their shelter. And finally, mow each infested area twice in different directions. North to south, east to west should do. Also, use your trimmer to get along fence posts or garden lines. Tighten everything up. After about a week or two of following these procedures, we did start to see less of them around. And by starting to get control of them outdoors, we saw fewer of them indoors. This was the first step alongside some other procedures that I'll get into later in the video. Now let's go over the methods, tools, and products that I use to help control these spider mites. Many of these products can be purchased at your big box stores like Home Depot, Lowe's, etc. And I will also have them linked down below in the description through Amazon. Let's also keep in mind that these aphids may be little, but they're pretty much bulletproof. They're extremely difficult to kill, and they have a very durable exoskeleton that prevents much from harming them. Sure, you could squash them all one by one, but if you have an infestation, you're going to be there all day. I bought a lot lot of products to control these guys. It was an absurd amount. I pretty much tried them all at Home Depot. I will give my score on each of these methods that I used based on how well I saw each of them perform. Please keep in mind that your situation may vary and I graded them on a 0 to 100% scale based on each product's effectiveness. 
You are about to be blown away by how little some of these products actually worked. First up was something simple, dumping boiling hot water on them. I only did this on concrete because I feared what it would do to the lawn. I'm going to give this grade a 15% because this took time to boil the water, dump it on the patio, and then boil more. And then as soon as it dried up, more spider mites came out. Next up was lemon juice. This method earns another 15%. This acidic method would kill them, but this again could only be done on concrete because I feared what it would actually do to the lawn and other plants. Oh, this was a fun one. Lighting them on fire. That's right, I busted out the blowtorch. This would earn a measly 20% because the flame was so powerful it would actually just push everything away rather than burn them. Useless, plus it would fry the grass. Here was an interesting one, planting mint. We planted mint here, here, and two mint plants on this side of the pool. I'm going to give this a pathetic 5%. It didn't work at all. They weren't on it, but they were all around it. Neem oil was next. I heard that this is great for killing off their eggs, but I'm gonna give this a 20%. Here's why. Like many other products, neem oil works by coating or blocking the air nodules on the spider mites, therefore not allowing them to breathe. You have to spray it on your gardens and on your lawn in the evening or in the early morning. It can harm your plants and your lawn midday. I gave this effort a good two weeks doing this daily at night, and I saw no change. Next up, mite control hose end sprays. Useless, 5% at best. I sprayed this on my lawn and on my plants. Wasted money and no change. Again, you might think I'm being tough right now, but this is true for each product I tried based on how well it performed for my situation. Insecticidal soaps was next. I made a DIY mix of two tablespoons of Dawn to one gallon of water. This I'm grading at 20% because of the risk of burning your lawn and your plants in high temperatures. In most cases, rinsing this insecticidal soap off was required. Up on the list next is seven insect killer. The active ingredient in this is Zeta Cypermethrin. Sounds like a frat or sorority name. That word methrin in cypermethrin though is important. I was told by a conservationist that products with methrin concentrations of 0.25 to 0.5 will kill spider mites because it blocks their airway nodules. I sprayed this directly on a bunch of them. They stopped and after about a minute got back up and started moving all around through it. It maybe killed one. For that, this product gets a 5%, and that's being generous. Another one that I found at Home Depot was Malathion Concentrate. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Dude, it's actually pronounced Malathion. This one was terrible at 5%. Much like the Seven brand, they crawled right through it, and away they went unfazed. Ortho Lawn Insect Killer was next, and I went on a lot of social media groups asking how to get rid of spider mites. Many people came back and said, use Bifenthrin, use Bifenthrin. Well, I'm here to tell you, it didn't work. Now, this product, I'll cut some slack because it's not directly geared toward aphids and spider mites, but it contains a ton of bifenthrin. Zero percent. It didn't work at all. I put this down around my house with my spreader. I even put a thin line of it here in this crack between my garage floor and my driveway. Plus, I did the same thing back by my patio. I wandered it in hard, and spider mites crawled right through it. A lot of people claim that this worked, and bifenthrin can be found in a lot of other products that kill spider mites, too. I'm here to tell you, it did absolutely nothing. Triazicide insect killer was up next. Same as the ortho, didn't help me out at all, 0%. I saw some spider mites crawl right through it. <laughs> On a positive note though, I didn't have a single ant, roach, spider anywhere inside or outside of my house for the longest time. And Bug Be Gone was next. I'll give this a 15% because it only killed a few. Many spider mites did struggle when they were sprayed, but a lot got right up and crawled right out of it. Oh, finally, some better ones. Here, ladies and gentlemen, are your top four. This is Defense SC. This one worked a little bit better. The verdict on Defense SC is 30%. Mix about one to one and a half ounces of this bad boy in with a gallon of water and start spraying spraying your lawn, your gardens, and anywhere you might see spider mites. Spray it in the evening, and here's a little tip. Adjust your stream so that way when you spray it, it comes out like a weak squirt gun. Mist mode just won't hack it. You need to soak them a little bit. Sliding in at number three was permethrin. Some states do not allow sale of this product, so buyer beware. With 10% permethrin, this came in at one of the strongest of the bunch, and I'm gonna grade this at 40%. They use this stuff on horses, I guess, to keep mites and fleas away. I would mix one to one and a half ounces in one gallon of water, and I would spray this in the evenings. Usually, this would kill spider mites on direct contact, but if they did manage to crawl through, it would slow them down. Wasn't perfect, but it was better. 
In second place, if you're gonna bring more bugs into your yard, you might as well bring their enemy, ladybugs. 50% for these little gals. You can order these in large quantities on Amazon and they love to eat spider mites. I did place some ladybugs right near some spider mites and they immediately took off. They sprinted away so fast. It was actually really funny to watch. They were absolutely terrified of the ladybugs. Ladybugs will hang around until their food source is gone. They eat what they see and they fly away. Once they're gone, they're gone. I did see a few come back, so that was a good sign. One of the big issues I had with this though was I ordered 1,500, I received about 300, half of those were dead, I returned the item on Amazon, got another 300, and more than half of those were dead. I complained again and I did get my money back, so that was a plus. Last but not least, in first place is Diatomaceous Earth. This one gets an outstanding score at 90%. We found Diatomaceous Earth to work extremely well. This is actually a very cool product. Food grade Diatomaceous Earth is low in crystalline silica and is considered safe for humans. The filter grade type is high in crystalline silica and that is toxic to humans. Again, this is the food grade quality. It's very powdery. I like to wear gloves when using this stuff because it absorbs moisture so well. And that is actually the really big trick with killing spider mites. At a microscopic level, diatomaceous earth is actually very sharp and crystallized. When mites crawl through it, it tears up their exoskeletons. Ah! It's kind of like us walking on glass. This weakens them severely. Then the diatomaceous earth absorbs any moisture inside their bodies, dehydrating them and killing them from within. So long, suckers! We like to gently pour some diatomaceous earth along the edges of our concrete, pavers, and around our driveway. This kept them out of the garage and off of our patio. In fact, I caught a quick video of them crawling around in the diatomaceous earth. Because of it, they couldn't climb up the concrete and kept falling down. One was kind of even flicking around and falling all over the place. Must have been a painful death. Check this out, I put a barrier all along the edge. This will keep them in the grass and off of the patio. And then I even went as far as to put it around the pavers here inside the grass. This will help kill them in the middle of the grass here too. Now do exercise some caution when you step on this because you will leave some footprints. They do wash away next rainstorm, so don't worry about it. And that's another thing, when it rains, you'll just have to reapply this. Not a big deal, it took only a couple minutes and you're protected from the spider mites. Look at that, just let them crawl through. See if you live, little guys. By the way, it's very powdery and it will get on your clothes. Don't worry, it washes right out. Luckily, many of these products had a money back guarantee. Once I bought them, I tried them out and if they didn't work, I returned them. Now those were all the products and how well they worked, but you may be asking me, JB, what is the best plan of attack. The best plan of attack is actually a one, two, three, four combo. Number one, dial in your mowing. Mow often, mow in different directions, use the bagger, and lower the height of the mower. Number two, use diatomaceous earth to set up a barrier along high infestation areas. Number three, spray defense, SC, or permethrin every other evening on your lawn or bushes. And lastly, fertilize with earthworm castings. If you follow the one, two, three, four combo, I guarantee you, your spider mite numbers will come down. If you choose to skip steps along the way, it will take a lot longer to knock them out. Please keep in mind though, that it is nearly impossible to wipe them completely out. You will still see some wandering around during higher temperatures. Avoid these infestations and you will be much happier. And if they do come back, hit them with the one, two, three, for knockout combo. For more cool garage gear content, check out these other cool videos and down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the garage.